Welcome to Vivid History, bring you vivid and fascinating historical stories through colorized photos. In just a few weeks, it will be the 236th anniversary of a significant event that marked the end of the American Revolutionary War. On October 19, 1781, Charles Cornwallis, a highly esteemed British general, was forced to surrender at Yorktown. Unable to face the victorious American and French forces himself, Cornwallis sent another general to meet Washington and Rochambeau in defeat. While the surrender at Yorktown is well known, there are ten lesser-known factors that ultimately led to Great Britain's defeat in North America. Great Britain's struggle for independence was not just a battle on American soil. The embattled King George III faced opposition from France, Spain, the Netherlands, and even factions in India. The French formed an alliance with the American colonists and intervened in the war, preventing the British from receiving reinforcements at Yorktown. Meanwhile, the Spanish, Dutch, and Indian factions actively fought against the British crown, further stretching their military forces. The Revolutionary War was partly caused by British taxation in North America, which provided the crown with significant income for its Royal Navy and state-sponsored trade ventures. However, Great Britain's economic interests extended beyond just the American colonies, as they relied heavily on foreign trade for their mercantile economy. The British implemented navigation acts to regulate the transfer of commodities, maximizing state profits and undermining their rivals. With assets spread across the British West Indies, British East India Company, and other global trade networks, the British were unable to fully commit their military and political resources to suppress the American rebellion, leaving them vulnerable to attacks from adversaries like the French. The direct intervention of Spain in the Revolutionary War is often overlooked in popular history. Spanish forces played a significant role in the conflict, engaging in battles and sieges across the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. They harassed British shipping, gained control of strategic locations like Menorca, and challenged the British during the lengthy siege of Gibraltar. Additionally, Spanish forces opposed the British in the Caribbean and captured key forts along the Mississippi River, even fighting battles as far north as Fort St. Joseph in modern-day Michigan. The internal political divides within Great Britain played a significant role in their loss of the war for independence. The Tories and Whigs, two opposing factions, were constantly at odds over issues such as succession, constitutional authority, and religious tolerance. Prime Minister Lord Frederick North, a Tory sympathizer, mishandled the war and ultimately resigned following Cornwallis's surrender. His successor, Charles Watson Wentworth, recognized the Continental's call for independence, leading to the costly and mismanaged war. The British ranks during the American Revolution were plagued by friction and political turmoil. The rivalry between General Sir Henry Clinton and General Charles Cornwallis was a topic of much discussion among historians. As Prime Minister Lord Frederick North and Lord George Germain ordered Cornwallis to march south on the Carolinas, tensions between Cornwallis and Clinton grew, leading to disastrous consequences. Clinton's hesitation to reinforce Cornwallis, possibly out of spite, combined with a French fleet blockade, ultimately led to the defeat at Yorktown and the collapse of the Southern Campaign. As tensions rose and conflicts brewed, the British press found itself in the midst of it all. London media outlets eagerly covered the disheartening events unfolding both at home and abroad, fueling discontent among politicians, military leaders, and the public. Partisan journalists, vying for attention,
published hit pieces that worsened the already volatile situation, ultimately alienating General Cornwallis and contributing to the downfall of British forces. As tensions escalated during the Revolutionary War, British forces turned their attention to the South, where violence reached new heights. Colonial militias, fueled by the inhumane treatment of captured soldiers and non-combatants by the British, were ready to fight to the death. Sir Benastre Bloody Ban Tarleton, infamous for providing no quarter to captured soldiers, led a ruthless unit known as Tarleton's Raiders, who wreaked havoc across the South and contributed to the growing American resentment. During the Revolutionary War, the British Army excelled in linear warfare, where soldiers formed battle lines and fired muskets in unison. However, their advantage quickly diminished when faced with irregular militias, particularly in the South where the terrain hindered their traditional deployment. Francis Marion, known as the Swamp Fox, was a renowned guerrilla fighter who employed ambushes and sharpshooters to target British officers, while militiamen used improvised shot to devastating effect. These partisan tactics played a crucial role in turning the tide of the war and ushering in a new era of warfare. During the Revolutionary War, naval combat played a crucial role in the conflict. While the British Royal Navy was highly respected, it faced constant engagement from other European powers like the French and Spanish. To compensate for their lack of a strong navy, the Continental Congress sanctioned privateers, armed merchant ships that disrupted enemy shipping and commerce. These privateers outnumbered the Continental Navy and played a significant role in capturing thousands of British prisoners. Sir Henry Clinton, the supreme commander in North America for King George III, played a significant role in Great Britain's loss of the American colonies. However, a lesser-known factor contributing to his downfall was his mysterious and debilitating illness. Clinton suffered from random bouts of complete blindness, compromising his ability to lead his forces effectively. This, combined with his disgust towards the political conduct of the war and the favoritism towards his junior, Cornwallis, led to his isolation and delayed reinforcement at Yorktown, ultimately marking the end of the war. 